Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite tanking team in the Bay Area. On today's episode, we recap a wild weekend in San Jose Hockey Now. We talk about the Sharks' loss to the Wild. We talk about that, and then we're going to talk about the Barracuda, their push for the playoffs. So, all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen we're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, we cover your team every day here at Locked on Sharks. And big weekend in the tank for the Sharks this weekend as they lose to the Wild 5-2. to two. I was at the game. Um, actually, a really, really fun, enjoyable game to be at. Perfect if you're a fan of uh, losing games and gaining uh, standings in the tankathon. Um so we're going to talk about that game. We're going to talk about uh, the Barracuda. Of course, um, amazing Friday night, followed by a beatdown on Saturday night, and then kind of what you need to, they need to kind of do as the season ends to try to make a playoff push here, um, as they are currently three points out of a playoff push uh, with about, you know, um, a little over a month to go here. So big push for the, the CUDA coming up here. So let's first start out by talking about uh, the Sharks. Five to two loss uh, to the Wild. Um, the lines basically have been the same for the past couple of weeks, or for the basically since Eklund ha- has joined the team, the lines have been about the same. Um, and you keep getting basically the same results. Um, the team looks decent at times. Actually, to, against on Saturday night, they outplayed the Wild for many many portions of the game but mark andre Fleury was the difference um and then the sharks as we've seen all season right any any sort of thing that goes wrong goes catastrophically wrong for the sharks and that happened uh again it's literally the first two minutes into the game right um where a a puck just squeaks through and then all of a sudden it's a breakaway in the wild or up one nothing a minute and a half into the game so but Looking at the numbers, the the stats and the analytics and stuff, um, five on five play, the Sharks were actually the much better team than the Wild. So in you know in the the entire game at five on five, um, Sharks expected goals for was three to the Wild's one point four two. Shot attempts were fifty six to thirty five in favor of the Sharks. Um, shots for twenty nine to eighteen. Scoring chances thirty to sixteen. High danger chances sixteen to eight. But the Wild scored goals at even strength, and the Sharks did not. Um, and this is, again, when you take Timo Meyer, who's uh, really good at scoring, out of the picture. And the Sharks, they, they don't have just a lot of kind of pure goal scorers right now. Um, you know, it, it was good to see the power play kind of humming. They did score twice, and the power play has been very tough, especially since uh, Timo Meyer left, but um, Tomas Hurdle's been kind of finding his groove. Logan Couture scored as well, and I did say after Timo Meyer gets traded, um, expect Tomas Hurdle to go on a bit of a heater to end the season. And what have we seen from Tomas Hurdle uh, the past couple games? Right, so like he's definitely, I think, finding his groove playing with Eklund and Zetterland. Um, I'm still not sold on Zetterland. I know coming over in a trade is is you know a, a tough situation. Um, but we shall see. I, I'm trying to hold until we kind of at least get an off season or, you know, get a little bit more, um, just a little bit more chemistry between him and, and, and uh, and hurdle in, and Eklund. So, but I mean, back to, to hurdle though, like the past few games here. Um, so he's got in the month of March, um, He's got four goals and an assist, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six games. So starting to see that scoring touch coming back, especially after February where he ended uh, with one goal and four assists. So he's basically – he's already tied his production um, literally two weeks into the this month, and he did all of, of last month. So um, expect Hurdle to, to 
kind of regain his form here um, as the the uh, the season winds down, and we can put to bed the oh my gosh they traded the wrong guy or et cetera et cetera. Um, that's that's a topic for another day, but we want to see Hurdle be productive um, going at the end of the season. That way, is again one question we don't have to answer going into the offseason of can Tomas Hurdle still be a 1C for this team? I want him to build that chemistry with Eklund. Um, want, you know, still want to find another line mate there uh, for them. Got plenty of, of work, plenty of time to figure that out this offseason. But we want to see Hurdle continue to be, um, you know, be the guy that we expect from Tomas Hurdle. And I expect that to happen as the season winds down and him to continue to kind of add, get to his scoring. And I Hurdle should be a 60 point scorer for the Sharks by the end of the season. I, I have little to no doubt in that, especially even if the Sharks are not scoring right now, I still think Hurdle will be a 60 point scorer for the Sharks. Um, and Couture is going to be right there with him too. And that's, that's good to see if Logan Couture can gracefully age and, you know, continue to be a 60, 50 point scorer for the Sharks over the next couple of years, instead of um, kind of the injuries that we've seen with, with Couture uh, the past couple of years, I want to see him kind of gracefully age. And I think, Playing with Bear Banoff has helped a lot. So as I've talked about a bajillion times, but um, before we kind of dig into the lines, look at how the lines actually looked. And then at the end of the show, we're going to talk Barracuda and, and their push to the playoffs. Do want to take a quick break um, and talk to you guys about our friends over at Athletic Greens. If you want to work on getting better gut health, need more energy, you want to optimize your immune system, and you don't want to take a bunch of pills and vitamins, you want a supplement that actually tastes great, to me, it's got a nice little like dark chocolate aftertaste. Um, you need to check out Athletic Greens. So one scoop of delicious AG1, cup of water, shake it up, drink it before you even have your morning coffee. You're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens that help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all the things. And it's lifestyle-friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and still while tasting good. The founder, he has tummy issues. Tired of taking a bunch of different supplements to help him with him. It cost him $100 a day. That's why he came up with Athletic Greens to try to help himself and everybody else, especially if you have those tummy issues. So... They're going to make it super easy for you right now. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free year supply of their immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs for your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, let's dig into the lines. How do they actually look? Again, we're... Going forward, right? We want to see which of these which of these guys are question or are they questions that need to be answered or answers to questions going forward. Um, so we're gonna start with so the Eklin Hurdle Zetterlin line um, had themselves a fabulous, fabulous night. Um, I know Kaprizov wasn't playing for the Wild, and they were kind of just in a scratch out wins scratch out points right now um you know play defensive hockey scratch out points make it to the playoffs and have Kaprizov come back you know at, at that playoff time type of situation but you have to you have to be kind of encouraged when you hear some of these stats right this talks about the hurdle playing much better um so Eklund, Hurdle, Zetterlin played 10:42 time on ice together at five on five. 16 shot attempts for nine allowed. Uh, actual shots was six to seven. So again, they're they're taking a lot of shot attempts, um, and then the ones that they're giving up, they're getting on goal. Uh, expected goals for is 0. 0.96 to 0. 0.51 in favor of them. Ten scoring chances for them gave up three. That's what you love to see. Three high danger gave up three as well. Uh, four, six, and one for their zone starts. Um, I thought Eklund was going to score, like so close. I was hope I wanted to see his first goal live. Like I, yeah, um, I would have 
ascended into the heavens never to be seen again if it, no um actually i was uh, i was sitting with jay from the lockdown blue jackets we were talking uh, and he was behind the net i was like oh he should try the michigan um and if he had scored on the michigan i probably would have just lost my mind um and that would all i would have been talking about for like three weeks straight was how william eklund's first goal was scored on a michigan um but no that didn't happen so maybe We'll see. The Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets are, uh, yes, he's already, uh, Jay has already said William Eklund is scoring against the Blue Jackets. So, but you have to be, you know, Eklund. I know there's still things that need to be ironed out with this game. He's still, he's, again, he's only 20. He's still building his body, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to be impressed with when he's on the ice, the Sharks are doing positive things. And I think that's, again, the Eklund hurdle combination. So, Barabanov, Couture, Andres Johnson, 11, 34 time on ice together, uh, 13 shot attempts, four, five allowed. Good to see. Shots actually were nine to four, did give up a goal as well. Same thing with the hurdle line. 0.75 expected goals, four to 0.19. So they're doing a good job. This Couture Barabanov pairing has just been a, a great pairing all season long. Um, we should, you know, Barabanov, Barabanov's done a really, really good find for the Sharks. Hot, seven high danger chances gave up one seven scoring chances gave up one um and then six four and four so even they had the most offensive zone and the most defensive zone start so which makes sense having kotor kotor is your responsible line right um you know exactly what you're getting on that line every time they sit on the ice um hurdle eklund zetterlin right you're going to have up and down play with them um most of the time it's going to be positive but they're going to get hemmed in their own zone occasionally as well so what else? We did have a little bit of line shuffling here because of um, the Sharks were down, and I think uh, David Quinn was trying to find some offense. So uh, next on kind of the time on ice, so we'll kind of go through. So Sveshnikov, Sturm, and Gregor, um, 643 time on ice together. Four shot attempts, gave up six. Uh, actual shots was three to, a one, to one. Sorry, excuse me. Um, 0.6 to 0.22 expected goals, so not much offensively there. Two scoring chances gave up five. Zero high danger gave up three. Not good to see. Um, one, five, and three with their zone starts. So, and then the fourth line of Limblom, Lawrence LeBanc, 425. Um, five shot attempts, four gave up two. Um, and then had four actual shots, gave up zero, 0.17. So they weren't getting very good quality. They were getting shots, which is not very good quality uh, chances. So, um and then one zero one <laughs> they're mostly on the fly start so um we even had an eklund hurdle bear ban off for a little bit uh they didn't really do two they had one shot attempt uh in less than two minutes of play so um again i think that was quinn trying to find some offense uh offense going forward because they were again down uh four to two at the start of at the sort of the third period after they a 5 one, 3 power play that the Wild scored on. So, again, perfect. Entertaining, right? You saw positive things from Eklund. You see positive things from Hurdle. Um, Eric Carlson, right? We're rooting for Eric Carlson. We basically need a point per game. So, now he needs uh, 16 points in the last 15 games to break 100. Okay, got his point. So, these are, these are the things that we are rooting for uh, going forward. And still get racking up those those losses. Um, no loser points. No more loser points. The Sharks have too many loser points. So, um, yeah, I mean, poor Reimer. I thought he kind of he was okay. Um, you know, some of the stuff wasn't his fault. Some of the stuff was, you know, he didn't have a good night, especially in the high danger ch chances. Um, he had eight high danger shots, and he gave up four goals on those. And so. That's one of those, some of those, again, you want him to try to make a save there, but sometimes he's kind of put in a bad position. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much kind of the story of this game, right? We, we've seen it all year long for them. So trying to focus on the positives, keep racking up those losses. Eklund do well. Want to see Zetterlin start to kind of gain some more confidence. Uh, and we want Carlson to add, keep adding those points uh, again, hundred points. I think if he gets a hundred, you have to give him the North. Like I'm, I would be shocked if he doesn't win the North, if he hits a hundred, especially on, uh, I mean, you guys have watched this team. It is, uh, it's not good. If you're just turning in, tuning in right now, they're not a very good team. And 
Carlson deserves a lot of the credit for them being as competent as they are most nights. Could you imagine how bad this team would be if Eric Carlson was not uh, playing hockey for them? It would be uh, it would be a train wreck. So um, before we finish up, we're going to talk switch over to the Barracuda game. Uh, so I'm going to talk about kind of their path forward, kind of the big games. They have all every game basically from here on out is, is going to feel like a playoff game for them, especially as they make this push to try to get into the playoffs. So going to look at their schedule going forward, um, where game like their most important games, and then. Look at some of the players who need to have a big end of the season for them to kind of make a playoff push. So um, before we get into that, do want to tell you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, you've got to try Built Bar. The great thing about them is they're healthy, but they're also covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. So it's like you're eating something that actually tastes good. Um, so you can actually eat something that tastes good and is healthy for you at the same time. Modern science. Where have we got, come from? Anyway, unbelievable flavors. They have churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, and almond. And like I said, each Bilt Bar has 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. So they are it tastes like a candy bar while, make, while being uh, good for you as well. And if you're like me and you hate waiting for things to come in the mail, you can head over to Walmart or Sam's Club today and pick up a box at Walmart. You grab a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. Swing by Sam's Club. If you got one near you, grab a 13-bar box of their hit flavors, brownie, batter, and churro. Or you want to peruse, you don't like leaving your house, uh, Built.com has got you covered. They have a whole variety of flavors on there. I like the variety packs. That way, in case one day you're feeling a little cookies and cream, one day you're feeling a little double chocolate, they got you covered there. Or if you want to try to figure out which one is your favorite. So make sure you guys check out Built Bar at Built.com, Walmart, and Sam's Club today. All right. Our beloved CUDA. Um, a tale of two games. So Friday night, great game from the Barracuda. Jeff, VL, uh, Liz, you were right. I apologize. Um, Jeff, VL with the Natty Hattie as a Barracuda win 4 to nothing. And then as we kind of seen with the Barracuda all season, right, you kind of feel like they're starting to gain some momentum. And then the next day they get absolutely smacked um, by Bakersfield uh, at six to two. So, but I mean, right now looking at the standings um, right now, there nobody else is play. Everybody's final. Okay. Just want to double check, make sure we're all good. Um, so in the Pacific division right now, uh, Calgary has claimed their clinched their spot right now. They're first in the division at 87 points. A reminder, the top seven in the Pacific get in. So they're in Coachella is second with 82. Abbotsford is 71 points at third. Colorado, 67 points. Rain, 65. Bakersfield, 58. Tucson, 56. And the Cuda at 53 with uh Henderson 49 points. So Barracuda, they have some work to do here. They do have a game in hand on Tucson, and they've played the same amount of games as Bakersfield. So those are kind of the two teams that you're looking at. Um three Tucson is probably gonna be the, the easier one uh between the two. So for uh for the CUDA going forward, they're kind of they're scheduled here, right? They got Henderson. You need to win. Like you have to win any team below you have to win. So they have one game versus Henderson. Um, and then they have a game versus the goals in April. And that's pretty much it. Everybody else is kind of above them in the standings. So you got to win that game. You have as a must win game. It's a Wednesday morning game. I think it's school day or whatever. So like you got to come out and you got to take care of business that day. This weekend you're hosting the Texas stars who are the first place team in the central um the following week you have two games against colorado and then you have two games against bakersfield um those bakersfield games are you have to sweep those uh, especially at home those are you have to sweep those games if you want to have a chance so against colorado right if you can go one for one against the stars if you can go one for one uh bakersfield you have to sweep that because that is a, that's a four point swing, right? Type of that get you get four, you can gain four points on Bakersfield um, that weekend. End of the month, beginning of April, they play the Stars again in Texas. You got to try to you got to split there. Um, they have a then a 
swing by Coachella for one game. Um, you got to try. I know Coachella, they're a very good team. Um, they should be clinched by then. Maybe they're trying to fight for that number one spot. But you've seen the Barracuda. They have played Coachella. Every time they play them, they play them better and better and better. This is the game. You have to try to win that game. Um, the goals on April 5th, that is a must-win game for them. And then you play the Colorado Eagles. And the, you end with two games. You got to try to split there. And then the Tucson Road Runners, the end of the season, you have to win both those games. It's in Tucson, uh, but you're going to be most likely going to be playing for your playoff life that weekend. Um, and that's the one of those, another one of those four point game situations where you can try to um, really make up some ground there, uh, especially against Tucson. So Tucson, I just want to pull up their schedule here, see how they kind of look. Cause that's, that's going to be the one you have to try to pick off. I, th- I think so um, their schedule. So they play, Admiral, they play, yeah, at Milwaukee. Um, they play at Calgary. They play a couple against the Rain. They play Colorado, uh, a couple against Colorado, one against San Diego, a couple against Bakersfield um, for this month. I'm trying to see. So there's their schedule pretty similar to the, the Barracudas here. So, um, yeah, I think the key thing for the Barracuda is going to be to try to, again, you got to Tucson. And you Bakersfield, you can't lose any more games to those guys because those are your those are the closest ones. Um, and then you got to try to split everything else as best you can. So, but who's going to be the important players for for the going forward? Right? Um, I think a couple guys here. You need Akazino to keep playing well. He's played. He's been, I would say, their most consistent player all season. Um, so you need him to continue to play well. And then you're going to need someone to step up. Like Jeffrey Vale has really come on as like if he can end the season. Um, I don't expect a hat trick every game, but if we can see Jeffrey Vale continue to add more of that secondary scoring, um, I really like Jacob Peterson's game on Friday night. I think he had three assists as well. Um, but you need one of these young guys. Like you need Daniel Gushin, you need a Thomas Bordalo, you need a Robbins, you need an Ozzy. You need one of these guys to step up, especially with William Eklund up in the NHL. I would expect Eklund to be up there for most, if not the rest of the season. Um, so I think the shark season ends on the th- April 13th. So, and Eklund might be in Tucson that weekend uh, to play, uh, to finish up the season, especially if they need to win those games. Um, you should get some reinforcements here soon. Uh, Beastead. His season is over in the SHL. Have let his seasons over in the SHL as well. Um, and then Shakir Mukuma Dillon, uh, his their KHL season ended early, so they got knocked out in the first round uh, in an upset. So um, Mike Greer has already said that um, Mike Greer, right? My Dolphins this weekend. Chris Greer, you keep doing your thing. Um, anyway, Mike Greer has already said that he wants him over here to end the season. So I would expect. Luka Madillon to be over here um, playing on this Barracuda team, especially right now. They they need the blue line help. Um, I like Knizov, Knizov. I like Knizov's game so far. You can really kind of – you can see his growth. Um, of course, he still has things to work out, but you can really see his growth over the past couple of weeks. But um, you're going to be getting some reinforcements hopefully soon as you try to make this playoff push. and Hopefully some of these guys can gel quickly um, so that way you can make the playoffs and – Again, you're going to be squeaking at the seven seed. You're going to be playing a team like either Calgary or Coachella, or you know, you're going to be playing a good team like that. But hopefully, you can kind of come in and make some noise here. So um, that's that's kind of the path, right? You got to try to split as many games as you can um, against the the better teams. You got it. You can't lose to Tucson. You can't lose to Bakersfield anymore. And then you got to take care of Henderson. You got to take care of San Diego, and then hope, hope. Tucson starts to kind of fall off here. That's, that's, that's what you need. You need either Tucson or Bakersfield to kind of fall off here. So, yes, so that's going to be it. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. I'm uh, going to have my friend Jay on. Uh, instead of doing a normal preview, we're going to talk uh, kind of since both of our teams are in the best position right now to draft Connor Bedard, we're going to talk kind of just a big Connor Bedard conversation of what he would mean for each of our teams. Um, going forward. Uh, so a lot of Connor Bedard talk coming up. 
Uh, Scouch is coming back to profile Connor Bedard. So that'll be on Thursday. Um, going to have game recaps as well and keep track of what's going on with the Barracuda. So plenty of stuff going on here at Locked on Sharks. Again, we cover your team every day. So thank you guys for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Now for your second listen, go check out the Game to Game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked on Game to Game covers your game from across the NHL with local analysis only Locked on can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked on NHL wherever uh, you get podcasts. Odyssey app, YouTube, wherever. So, um, and you can also follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Locked On Sharks. Listen wherever you get podcasts. Uh, watch on YouTube as well if you haven't yet. Please subscribe. Helps me out a bunch. So, um, and until tomorrow, bye, friends. <laughs>